Well, we talked to a volunteer. They're expecting at least 2 million people out here. But right now, we're a little under an hour before the parade starts. And already, up and down 6th Avenue, there are thousands of people lined up behind the barricades waiting for the whole parade to kick off. This crowd here is very excited. They're on their feet. They're chanting his name. And the Democratic nominee will be speaking on that stage right behind me in hopefully just a few moments. We are in a brewery, so I had to ask, how exactly do you pour the perfect beer? We're taking a drive down Main Street here in Woodbridge towards our original spot in Perth Amboy. Now the roads have definitely been plowed, but they're still white because the snow continues to come down. Even before the first snowflakes fell on Friday night, cleanup crews have been preparing mentally and physically for this wintry challenge. When authorities arrive to the scene, they tell us they found evidence of an apparent shooting, but no victim. The doors have finally opened. Now it may still be Thanksgiving Day, but that didn't seem to stop these early shoppers from coming in to beat the Black Friday rush. Drivers weren't the only ones who found themselves stuck due to the rain. Even rail service was affected. On the business end of things, some restaurant workers tell us they'll be prepping all week because come Memorial Day, it'll be all hands on deck. I left this sink running, so it's been going for about 45 minutes now, and the water is just as cold if not colder from when I first turned it on. The prosecutor's office tells us that the bus was attempting to make a left turn onto Harrison Avenue when it struck the woman. The U.S. attorney was meant to release a list of Bridgegate conspirators today at noon. However, a federal judge just extended that deadline to next Tuesday. Two young Bronxites recovering now after being pulled out of the cold waters of Concrete Plant Park Thursday evening. News 12, the Bronx reporter Enzo Domingo at the firehouse of Ladder Company 54 the first fire company to respond to this chilly emergency. That's right, Maggie. It was two firefighters from this ladder company that jumped into that frozen water at Concrete Plant Park to pull a young boy and young girl back out to safety. Now, one of those firefighters is, was being treated at Jacoby Medical Center for exposure to that icy water, but the second firefighter was actually able to speak to us tonight. Chris Harkinish is all dried up now, but earlier Thursday afternoon, it was quick thinking and bravery that prompted him and fellow firefighter Kevin Hillman to plunge almost their entire bodies into a frozen lake in the Soundview section of the Bronx. They were very thankful, but I think more than anything, they were just happy to be off the ice and maybe a little, uh, little in shock. Around 4.30 Thursday afternoon, firefighters got the call for a young boy and girl trapped in the ice. Officials tell us the girl did fall into the water, but was able to pull herself back up while the boy was left stranded, and that's when firefighters donned exposure suits and climbed across the ice on top of a ladder. The boy and girl were taken to Jacoby Medical Center in stable condition because we're told they were showing signs of hypothermia. It was really lucky that somebody actually came in came in and saw them and saved them before it was too late. Firefighter Kevin Hillman was also taken to Jacoby because we were told he went into the water at least up to his neck. It makes me feel great. Uh, it really is. I have, I have two young girls at home. Uh, I can't imagine anything would happen to them. Uh, I'm glad that we're trained so well and we constantly drill on this stuff. You know, it makes you realize that uh, a lot of the reason why these men and women are called New York's Bravest is because of incidents like these. Unfortunately, we have no word as to why the boy and girl were out on the ice. And again, they, along with firefighter Kevin Hillman, were taken to Jacoby Medical Center to be treated. That's the latest from Soundview. Enzo Domingo, News 12, The Bronx. National Beer Day, the pseudo holiday for alcohol enthusiasts and college kids alike. Whether it's used to unwind after a tough day or the perfect thing to tie together social gatherings, everyone seems to enjoy a cold one. According to Time Magazine, today marks the anniversary of the signing of the Colin Harrison Act by President Franklin Roosevelt, which legalized the buying, selling, and drinking of beer and wine for the first time since Prohibition. We stopped by the Departed Souls Brewery in Jersey City, one of the many establishments that contributes to this 107.6 billion dollar market. Beer has been a, a huge part of our culture. Owner Brian Kilbacki started this business almost two years ago. This pet friendly brewery is also one of the few that actually serve gluten free beer. Despite this being a national day of fun, the story behind Departed Souls is bittersweet. One of Kilbacki's friends was diagnosed with celiac disease, meaning he could not consume gluten. Together they brewed gluten free beer until Kilbacki's friend passed away. The best way to honor his memory would be to chase the dream that we shared. And almost two years later, Departed Souls joins the over 6,000 other brew houses mixing up their old drinks. I'm biased to, to IPAs. Yeah, anything light for me, honestly. We're complete opposites. I tried the two IPAs they have on top here, the Dark Knight and the Pour My Home, eh? 
Both excellent. Now we are in a brewery, so I had to ask, how exactly do you pour the perfect beer? You got to open the tap handle fully. I feel like people get a little scared and they only want to open a little bit. You get too much, too much air in it that way. So just open it fully, nice 45 degree angle. You want a little bit of foam. It helps with the aromatics. It helps with the flavor. And after this perfect pour, there's not much else to say. Cheers. Reporting in Jersey City, Enzo Domingo, Fios One News. I know how they feel inside, and I wish I had somebody outside protesting for me out there. Muhammad Azim has first-hand experience of being detained years ago. He wants to provide hope, the type he says he needed while he was being held. That's why he and a group of others were in Newark Airport tonight to be sure that no one else was detained under President Trump's executive order barring people from seven majority Muslim countries from coming in. A few dozen people held up signs of support and solidarity by the terminal's exit. Having that feeling that, you know, somebody that I love and care about can also be detained at some point. I want to fight for them. Organizers tell me that no one had been detained here tonight. Just hours before in Elizabeth, hundreds of people turned out in front of the Immigration Detention Center to let their voices be heard. Some elected officials even took part today, including U.S. Senator Cory Booker and Assemblyman John Wisniewski. Last night there were people on planes who were flying home to their country, flying home to their adopted land only to find out that Donald Trump put out the no welcome sign. The protest started around 3 p.m. and after a few hours, some rallyers moved to Newark Airport. We're all coming stronger and uniting and showing people that like no matter what you throw at us, we'll all come together and we'll fight. Now some of the protesters tell me they'll be here until the last international flight arrives and the rep for Make the Road New Jersey says that this Wednesday, a protest will be held in Patterson by local Muslim groups. Reporting in Newark, Enzo Domingo, Fios One News. It began with a moment of silence, followed by the roar of motorcycles. More than one million people are celebrating at New York City's Gay Pride Parade and remembering the lives lost in the massacre at a gay nightclub in Orlando. Our Enzo Domingo has more from the parade route. Enzo? Well, all the way from Midtown Manhattan on 36th and 5th, down here to Greenwich Village on Greenwich Street and Christopher Street, the party goes on. Now, throughout the whole line, we saw various floats, some dedicated to the members of, of the LGBT community living with HIV and AIDS, and other floats dedicated to the victims of the Orlando shooting. Now, many that we spoke here today said that it's more than just a day of celebration. It's a day of togetherness. I go out, I, I do what I want. <laughs> As silly as it sounds, but no, it's you, you can't live your life in fear. Today was a day for the LGBT community to proclaim loud and proud in the face of hate that they are who they are. Millions of people looked on and thousands more walked in the 46th annual Gay Pride March down 5th Avenue. We're out, you're not going to keep us down, and we're proud of who we are. It's just so great to be here with everybody and being able to be proud of who I am. The theme of this year's parade is Unity Needs You, a much more poignant theme given the massacre in Orlando. Now before the parade, a moment of silence was observed for the 49 victims. A handful of groups even waved orange flags to represent the Orlando victims. While we're celebrating we're also remembering, um, you know, our friends and family that were taken from us in Orlando. So I think, you know, we, it's a great opportunity to celebrate our achievements and remember those that have gotten us to where we are. In response to Orlando, New York City Police Commissioner Bill Bratton said publicly that there would be extra security this year in the form of thousands of officers both marching along the route and plain clothes officers mixed in with the crowds in order to ensure everyone's safety. It's so important to make a stand here and yeah, to show all the U.S. all the love we have. It's a good theme to like celebrate and like come together and stand up for to the hate and everything that's going on right now. Now the parade ends here in Greenwich Village on Greenwich Street and Christopher Street, not too far away from the Stonewall Inn. Now the Stonewall Inn was the site of the Stonewall riots back in 1969, and this past Friday, President Obama actually declared the inn as the uh, the latest national monument, the first one for the LGBT community. We're reporting in Greenwich Village. This is Enzo Domingo, Fios One News.